This is the Azimut Verve 48 and it replaces the phenomenally successful Verve 47. They sold over a hundred of those boats in just over three years. There are key differences all over the place and we're going to have a full look around the whole thing but one of the major ones is it's now got triple 600 horsepower V12 Mercuries. So the first thing we're going to do is head out to sea and see what it can do. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Before we get her up to speed though, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. I wouldn't want you to miss any of our sea trials. Right, let's get going. I know what you're thinking, you've got three engines, so what does that mean for manoeuvring around a marina? Well, of course, this is a Mercury product, so you get a joystick with Skyhook, and the joystick means that you just push the direction you want to go, the engines figure it out, they'll vector, and then the boat will move sideways or twist or whatever you want to do, and then with Skyhook, you push a button, and they'll do the same thing to keep the boat in the position that you left it in. But I know you don't really care about what it's like at slow speed. Let's see what it's like when you open it up. Twelve knots, fifteen, twenty, thirty knots. Now, yeah, it's pretty potent. It's the same hull as the previous model, the forty-seven, but that boat had four four hundred and fifty horsepower Mercury racing engines. We're at forty knots now. This has got the same amount of horsepower, but split across three engines. These mighty six hundred horsepower Mercury V12s. And really the most remarkable thing is how smooth they are when you're up to 40 knots like this. They're a lot quieter than those 450 racing engines. They sound really naughty. These, these are a little bit more refined, but there's no less power. It's extraordinary how quickly this thing can get up to speed. And because you have the protection from this windscreen, you really don't get a sense of how fast you're traveling in any way. You've got this hatch above your head that you can open to get some ventilation. There's also a Webasto sunroof, but it's so refined standing here at 35 knots. And if you really open her up, you'll get up to 50 knots. But, but, but to be honest, it's not particularly dramatic. It's so stable and so quiet and refined that you can quite comfortably cruise at 40 knots where you're doing roughly 300 litres an hour. What about handling? Well, the strange thing with these engines is that only the bottom section moves. They've got pods at the bottom which move the propellers, so when you turn, the tops don't move at all, which is a bit odd to get used to. There's good reason for that. But really, performance is great, top end is great, but it's this 35 knot easy cruising speed that's what makes this boat so popular. They love it in the United States because they can cover ground so quickly. It's got these wonderful living spaces, but it's a high performance machine as well. It's remarkable and it's so easy to drive to tame that power. Single lever mode on the throttles means, again, like with the joystick, you're not having to think about juggling RPM, matching revs. It's all on one lever, it's all doing it for you. And you just find yourself naturally sitting at this 35 knot cruising speed where you know each engine is consuming about 100, 120 litres an hour. It is a pretty remarkable driving experience. <laughs> it is an absolute beast. triple engines out back, the grip is enormous. It really, it really doesn't let go. That's a flat out, wide open throttle, hard turn. And it just takes it in its stride. There's enough heel to make it exciting, but it's not gonna chuck you around. The driving position is excellent. You can sit, all three of these are adjustable, but this is a great position, leaning against this Bolster here with a fantastic view, close to the wheel, close to the throttles. There's a step as well, so you can elevate yourself if you're a little bit shorter. They've thought about how to make this comfortable no matter what shape you are. And it is just an absolute riot. <laughs> yeah, that's quite something. 
Let's have a closer look around the Dexter interior, shall we? I don't think I've ever waited so long to wait to do the tour section of a boat at a show. This has been rammed from the moment we got back from the sea trial, but it's clear now, so I'm going to get on with it. I mentioned out in sea about the bottom of these engines moving, only the bottom, not the top. The reason that's important is because they don't have to account for the engines to swing either way, they can make all of this much wider. They don't have to have the clearance to move the engines, so you get a much bigger platform back here. So yes, you've got the split because the outboards, but you still have plenty of space to move around back here. Storage is excellent across this boat. It's locked at the moment, unfortunately, but this lifts all the way up and you've got space for two sea bobs, one on top of the other in there, and you've got charging in there as well. You probably get deflated paddleboard in there as well. It's a really big space, very handily located. Back here at the aft end of the boat, that's also where the boarding ladder is, that stows in there, and you can slot that this side or that side. You've also got an emergency ladder if you fall in and there's no ladder in place. One of the changes over the 47 on deck is that the balcony now links here to the transom. So you can walk seamlessly from this part of the deck around to this part of the deck and then up into the cockpit. You haven't got balconies on both sides on this boat. It's L-shaped seating, which obviously provides you with a lot more seating, but it does mean you only get one balcony. That said, it gives you a lovely view, a lovely vista looking out over the water here. You've not got a platform aft, obviously, so this platform becomes even more important. Lots and lots of space in this cockpit. It's absolutely vast. And the table's clever because this drops down into the deck and when it's down at deck level, this is an absolutely enormous space to walk around in. If you want to do water sports, or do some fishing or just have free space, it's absolutely perfect. But then of course, press a button, up it comes and you can stop it anywhere. Coffee table height, dining table height. They've also got a vinyl cover that they've made bespoke for this table so you can cover it up because obviously you've got people walking around on it so you want to have it covered up when you're using it to eat. There's storage underneath all of these sections here and as an option you can actually have a cooler in the corner there, a fridge cooler. Obviously there's no storage here because it lifts up the other way to give access to that Seabob storage. Big hard top, that is a huge part of this boat design. Obviously it connects all the way down to the coach roof there. I really like this detailing up here. You've got back lighting and then you've got this sort of relief pattern of the Azimut logo. That looks really smart. And obviously shade is important on a boat like this. So you've got an extendable canopy that comes out the back of the hardtop and produces a huge amount of shade actually. Almost this entire seating area is shaded when the canopy's out. So that's a nice touch. The wet bar clearly is a focal point and it's got everything that you'd expect on a boat like this. You know, this is a boat to go out, entertain, enjoy where you are when you anchor. And you've got twin grills here, twin Kenyan grills. Nice big sink as well. And then the usual array of cooling space, you can have two fridges or one fridge plus ice maker and storage in the bin and things like that are all in there in this great position right in the middle of the boat. Television pops up from here at the touch of a button. Obviously that's really well located. So pretty much everybody in this L-shaped sweep of seating can watch the TV. So if you wanna watch a film at night, you can put the TV up and watch it up here. Nice touch. Under my feet, you've got storage over there. This is access to the fuel tanks underneath my feet here. And then underneath the table hatch, that hatch lifts up again and you have access to the machinery spaces. Obviously you've got the outboards out back, there's no engines down there, but it's where the generator is, it's where the air conditioning units are, it's where the sea keeper is, if you have that optioned and all very easy to get to. Another key change over the 47. On the 47, this bar was connected to the side of the boat, so you couldn't get all the way up the starboard side. It also meant that the person in this seat was trapped in when they were sat there. Removing this has made a massive difference because it gives you full walk around flow around the cockpit. It's ever so slightly narrower than that side, but it's still perfectly easy to walk through. And we talked about the helm out at sea. It's absolutely fantastic. And I mentioned briefly the sort of sunroof options up above, but it works really well. Because you're full, pretty much fully enclosed in terms of the windscreen, you don't get a huge amount of ventilation. So they've got a little hatch forward to let a bit of air in if it's, if it's not that warm. But if you want more air coming in, then you have a Wabasto sunroof that slides right back and gives you a really nice big aperture overhead. Moving forward on the starboard side, really easy boat to move around. This is all very nice and high and feels really safe. You've got a boarding gate on the starboard side only, but if you are side two, a taller key side, that's really handy. And this is another fabulous living area on board the Verve 48. Really amazing mix of sunbathing space here. These have got flip up backrests so you can have a bit of support when you're lying down. And then another seating area here. The table stows aft underneath the, the locker, the machinery space locker that I mentioned earlier on. So you can remove that, 
when you're going along, but it slots in there and gives you another nice place to have a drink or a coffee. You know, it's not a dining space, it's sort of snacks, cocktails, nibbles, that sort of thing. Underneath this pop-up canopy as well, so you have a bit of shade up, to, up here, but I like the sort of U-shaped seating. It's very sociable, comfortable, and also relatively well protected as well. Let's head inside. Now the Ver 48 screams big fast day boat and that predominantly is what it's for, but it's still a 50 foot boat. So maybe it should be no surprise that the accommodation is as spacious and comfortable as it is. You've got a proper lower dinette down here. This drops down and transforms into another berth if you want to use it that way. And considering the, the sort of mini galley you've got on deck, you've got another galley down here with cooking equipment, loads more chilling space over there on the way down the companionway behind that mirror, the TV set into there. You can only see it when it's on, but that's quite a neat integration. I mean, it's arguable whether you even really need this galley down here, considering you're gonna to wanna to spend your life cooking on deck, but nice to have it either way. And then there's the cabin spaces. So forward, you have the owner's cabin, which is a good size. I'll just step in so you can get a sense of the, the scale. Yeah, I mean, that's a nice cabin, good size bed, decent amount of storage in there as well. Headroom a little bit restricted at the end of the bed, so tricky to set up and read in bed, but lying down, perfectly comfortable. And then both cabins share the same bathroom. The bathroom's towards the midships here, but that's a decent size as well. Big enough to have a separate shower cubicle with, you know, well over six foot of headroom, six foot headroom throughout in this central bit. So it's, you know, very comfortable down here. And then you have the amidships cabin, which is the guest cabin. It's a twin. Its headroom is pretty restricted because obviously it goes underneath the cockpit, but it's still very nicely finished. The beds themselves are a good size. It's just that there's only really standing room at the end of the bed. There's no storage in there, but there is a TV and for occasional guests, absolutely spot on. Thank you very much for watching that sea trial and tour. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. And if you'd like to watch a review of one of this boat's stable mates, the Magellano 60, we've got a full sea trial of that if you click up here. And if you would like to subscribe to the channel, you can click up here. See you on the next one.